I spend many hours each day working on the Unix shell. A shell is a program that sits between you and the operating system and allows you to enter commands, process them and see the results. In this unit, we'll see how to enter commands, how we can change their options, how to find out more about each command and how to edit our operations. Please open up a terminal on your computer and try out what we'll be examining together. Let's get to the Unix command line prompt. The dollar sign you see here is the shell's prompt. It tells you that it's waiting for input from you. Depending on your shell's configuration, some additional information may precede it, such as your login name, the computer's name, or the current directory. The echo command echoes its arguments, which means it prints its arguments on its standard output, in this case on our screen. If I run echo hello world, Hello and World are its two arguments, and these will appear on the screen. The arguments of each command are separated by one or more spaces. A command takes its arguments and operates according to them. In this case, echo will output them separated by a single space. If I enter echo A followed by multiple spaces and then B, the result is still A, a single space and B. Let's now try a different command, date. Date displays the current date. On the shell, we can follow a command or begin a line with a hash character, which is a comment. Anything following the hash character is ignored. In this case, as you see, I get a date again. In this course, I'll use the hash character to annotate the commands I'll be using. All Unix shells support command line editing keys. Touch is another command. It creates a file with a name specified or it updates the file's timestamp to the current time. If you want to type another command similar to the previous one, we can use the up arrow in order to get the previous command and then edit it. For example, add a file with a longer name. To see the files in the current directory, we use the ls command. This shows us the two files I have created, a file and a file with a longer name. It's possible to configure the command line editor in order to follow the conventions of the editor we use. You can find detailed instructions online. Nevertheless, most shells are configured in a way that allows us to move forward and backward on the command line and to delete characters using the backspace. Try to avoid using the delete key because in some configurations, this doesn't do what we might expect it to do. A handy shortcut is the ability to enter long file names. Here, I use the touch command to create a file with a really long file name. If I use ls to see the contents of the current directory, we see that this file has been created. Now, if I want to specify the file again, I can simply type the command I want, the first few characters that uniquely specify the file name, and then press the Tab key in order to let the shell complete the file name automatically. What do you do when you want to interrupt the command's execution? Here, I'm entering the sleep command which waits for the specified number of seconds to elapse, 60 in this case. If I don't want to wait for 60 seconds, I can press Ctrl C, which immediately gives me back control, interrupting the command that was being executed. Let's now see how we can change a command's behavior. I begin by creating two files, A and B. If I list the current directory, I see them here. If I want to find out more details about these files, I pass the L option to ls. This is specified with a minus and the letter L. This means a long listing which shows more details about the files, the creation date, the owner, the permissions and the file. Another option is the R, the reverse option, which shows the files in reverse order. Some commands 
allow us to specify the options in a so-called long format by preceding them with two minuses and using a long name. For example, ls minus minus reverse again lists the files in reverse order, but this time the option is more readable. We can combine options. So, ls minus l minus r will use both a long file format and list the files in reverse order. Options can also be combined by putting them together after the minus sign. So, ls minus lr is the same as ls minus l minus r. It lists the files in reverse order and in long file format. Some options allow us to specify an argument by following a space after the option and then the argument. For example, touch minus t allows us to use a specific timestamp. The argument 2004, 8th month, 13th day is the timestamp that will be used for the file. In long options, we specify the options argument by using an equal sign. For example, the invocation touch minus date equals the timestamp has the same effect as the previous one. And if we list the file, we see that its timestamp is August 13th, 2004. Right, but you may ask me, how can I remember all the command line options? The man command shows the documentation of a specific command. So, man ls shows the documentation of ls, the manual page of ls, including all the options in both their short and long format. The manual appears page by page by pressing the space button, while with Q we can quit the manual listing and return to the command prompt. Some commands even offer built-in help. A command's built-in help appears on the screen by writing the command and the long option minus minus help. So sleep minus minus help shows a brief listing of the options that the sleep command can accept and what it actually does. This concludes our foundation unit on the command line interface. Stay with us.